2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. I don't know about you, but I'll take all the comfort God's got for us in these troubled times. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that, see it's a purpose to it. He comforts you that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble uh, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Heavenly Father, we are not worthy to be in your presence. And, and like uh, Brother Josh so honestly did, what a blessing. I feel like I need to just uh, take some time privately to get right with you. But Lord, I'm going to have to do that in the process. But I do thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for this church and for your people, for what we are doing as a church and for what we will do uh, through your grace and help and power. And Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit would, that indwells us, <clears throat> Lord, would just fill us today. We want to be a blessing. We don't want to leave this place uh, this morning without uh, being encouraged and encouraging someone else. And Lord, so we thank you for letting us be here. You're so good to us. And uh, we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to read some verses that I was trying to print out, but we didn't get that done. But <clears throat> uh, this, this verse here, of course, talks about comfort. I'll get back to that in a minute. He says in Isaiah 40, 31, and this is how God uh, feels about encouraging us. Uh, they that, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, uh, shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And what we're going to see as I go through this, God's purpose, I, I want to say this now before, before I forget. Uh, you know that song, Nobody Knows the, the uh, Sorrow We've Seen. Well, there's an element of that in life. Nobody knows but Jesus. That's okay to, to, to visit there when you're down, but you don't stay there. And uh, I think maybe if that's in our song book, we should probably get he hauls doom, despair, and agony on me. <laughs> Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. I, that's all I know. Don't stay down. And the whole purpose of encouragement is not to keep us at a minimum where we're not absolutely despondent and suicidal, which people get that way, uh, you know, uh, to encourage us not to just come out of, out, of, uh, uh, out of our bedroom, out from under the covers, but to go out in the world, to see the sunshine, spread a little bit of joy, enjoy God. So God doesn't want us down. We get down, it's part of training, it's part of life, and then uh, I, I don't trust anybody that's up all the time. Nobody's up all the time. I'm not, and uh, I like to be encouraged. I learn things in the, in the, in the valley uh, that help me, thank God. But listen, God wants you to be happy. You're of more use to him if you're happy and if you're encouraged at least, then you are if you stay discouraged. So uh, God promises to be with us. He says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And then Joshua 1 and 9 have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. And it's interesting, uh, the definition that we'll get in a minute of uh, courage. Uh, the Lord is with, with thee whithersoever thou goest. He talks about in Deuteronomy, uh, the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be uh, dismayed. So, uh, this thing of comfort, he over and over and over and over, uh, this thing of comfort. We, why do we have problems? 
because we are in a sin cursed world that went awry. It wasn't what God designed. It wasn't what God planned. God didn't plan uh, for us to be for the thorns and the thistles and the heartache of life. There's a lot of heartache in life, and, and uh, that's, part of, that's part of life. And it's amazing what God does when we're down. I'm in more danger, I realize, when I'm up spiritually I'm in more danger of temptation. I preached on temptation the other day. And uh, uh, then when I'm down, when I'm down, I'm looking to God. And uh, I know God's going God's gonna to lift me out. So encouragement, encourage means to give courage, to grow, give or increase confidence of success, to inspire with courage, uh, spiritual strength of mind to embolden, to animate. You know what animate is to, to get you moving, to get you re receptive uh, uh, from the Holy Spirit, to incite, to inspire. So an encourager is one who does this. Uh, the Bible talks about those who have the gift of encouragement. Some people are better, better at others at uh, encouraging, and I'll show you why in just a minute, but uh, it talks about exhortation. That means an urging done by someone close beside. And I, I mentioned I'm trying to get more into the, uh, uh, I, I find myself preaching a lot of motivational messages and just about depart from <laughs> the Word of God. And I thought, no, I got to get back to the Word. I got to get back and uh, I've ordered some material that's going to help me, and I want to get back to these words. And so uh, I, I'm trying to do that. So the Greek word, it's a word that uh, the Holy Spirit is, you know, one that's called alongside to help. But it also speaks of, of uh, Christians and what God has called us to do. So it means someone, uh, urging done by someone close beside uh, to call to one side, to encourage, to admonish, and to entreat, to exhort. Now listen to this, and this, this is the Bible definition, the Bible understanding of these, of these words. To exhort is to develop our relationship with other believers. Develop, don't isolate. I'm bad to isolate. I really, that's my tendency. And so I have in the last several years have tried to change where I don't isolate so much and I really enjoy it a lot better, <laughs> amen. So uh, I realize when, I, when I, I'm around other people that they're more screwed up than I am. <laughs> and I don't know anything more encouraging. Spend a little bit of time with Tim Kipling if you don't believe me. But to develop a relationship with other believers for the purpose of encouraging and admonishing one another. Uh, in Romans 12, uh, 6 and 8, says it's a gift. Some people have the gift more than others. I don't have a gift to sing. Uh, I'm, I, I don't have, why are you laughing, sis? You heard me singing. <laughs> Am I that bad? I don't. There's a lot of gifts I don't have, but I think probably that's one thing I, I think I have, one thing that's in my heart, at least, is to lift people up, encourage people, and it encourages me. So here, here's some things um, that we need uh, if we're going to be an encourager. God wants to encourage you, and he wants to do it for a reason. Doesn't mean all your problems are going to go away. It doesn't mean that uh, that you're never going to worry again. It's so it's so hypocritical, uh, and I laugh about it. Us preachers preaching a rousing message about people being happy and serving God, and, and two days later, man, it's like we're down, you know, and and, uh, and that's bad. But we are, we're all dealing with this stuff in life, so. If you're going to be an encourager, I had the most blessed experience yesterday uh, with an editor's out art because my nosy 
relatives listen to this sermon. Thank you, dear. But <coughs> my, uh, my nephew, uh, he, he uh, talks with me some, and this is the first time uh, that I've had a, uh, how old is he? 30. 30-something. 30 he looks like he's 19. I hate him. But uh, <laughs> where is that? Here it is. So I talked to, he talked to me the other day, um, and he was talking about, he's, he's been on heroin for uh, years and years and years and just off and on and in jail and out of just horrible, uh, horrible things. And he says to me, and he laughs about my humor and stuff on Facebook, he said, on a serious note, Uncle John, I need you to pray for me. I've been clean going on two and a half years, and I haven't even thought about using anymore. But he's going through uh, a, a severe depression. He said, I cry about every 20 minutes, blah, blah, blah. And, and he said, I feel like I'm under attack. And I said, I and the church will pray for you. And he said, I really appreciate it. And, and I said this to him, some things feel bad uh, that are actually good. It's part of the process. Uh, you, you're feeling things you have not felt before. And I know that. Now, my drug uh, wasn't a drug, wasn't alcohol, but I have issues. I know you look at me and think, a perfect man. <laughs> but I deal with issues all the time. And uh, uh, for my growing up, I guess you could say, and I'm doing really good by the grace of God, but I still deal with issues, and I felt exactly what he feels. I felt the tears. Matter of fact, here lately I'm going through it again, and it's just almost, I'm not going to do it in front of you for your entertainment, but I, I cry at the drop of a hat. I mean, I'm just tear up about things, and what it, what it is and what I'm trying to, I, I told him, and I'm telling you this because maybe to help you, he sa I said to him, I know the feelings Crying is not bad. It's emotions kept catching up with you and face them with Christ. When you feel weak, you're, you're, you're strong. So I said, God is with you absolutely. And he's, he's like me. And I learned a lot of things about myself through counseling and through the years. And uh, he's just like me. We're both really, and you're going to laugh, but we're both really sensitive people. Really. And tenderhearted. And, but we... I kind of hide it, you know. I kind of mask it, but uh, we're sensitive. People that really know me know I'm I'm that way, and David's that way. I shouldn't have said his name, but he's edited out. But he's dealt with this heroin for all these years, and now he's feeling again. Now, here's the whole point. That, that blessed me. Yes, amen, amen. It blessed me, and I'll tell you something else if I can, <clears throat> if I can say this. Uh, we were at Upper County the other day, and I preached down there, uh, uh, or up there, wherever it's at, every, uh, uh, every Thursday night. I love going down there. It's just, it's, it's like a party. We sit down. We get good snacks. used to feed us. They phased that out. Phased it out, and now we're getting snacks. But I don't know how long that's going to last. Pray for us. But, uh, but it's, it's fun. And I was sitting there thinking, the Lord speaks to me at times, you know, and I'm preaching and I look and I just absolutely, well, I love all the people of the church, but the upper county people, I think about uh, Peggy and Jay, Tom and Shelley, and the Mosman, his uh, parents, uh, Lenny and Greg, and they are, it's intimidating for me to preach to them because they're so godly. And they so got it together. And I'm serious. That whole family, they got it together. With the exception of Tom. I mean, the rest of the family. And I was sitting there and God said, John, look at what I'm doing with you. You came from a, a real dysfunctional family. You didn't even know what a dad was. You learned how to be a father by watching your father-in-law. And I learned through the years, uh, you know, how to be a dad. And, uh, and, and God said to me, look at this. I took somebody who, is, who knows the least about family, the least about uh, uh, function in a family and roles in a family, 
And here you are preaching to them. That's what came to my mind last Thursday night. That and why they didn't bring me more coffee and dessert. But I think about that. Isn't that amazing how you can be on the lowest if, if these people, those good people saw me <laughs> before I got saved, no way. I'm not listening to that guy. God couldn't even help him. But he did. Amen. And it's encouraging to me to see the power of God because what I'm selling, what I'm telling, what I'm trying to convince people of, I'm an example that it works. Amen. Not because of me, but because of grace. The word works. The Bible works. And wherever you're at and however you might feel about yourself, God can do anything with you. Anything he wants to do that can elevate you, can encourage you, and help you. So an encourager has been down and came back up. I know what it feels like to lose a baby one day. I know what it feels like to lose a dad. I know what it feels like to lose brothers. They were dropping like flies for a while. I'm the last one left. I'm kind of like that. Except for my sister. Pray. Get a hold of God. I've got to outlive my sister. She's saved. She's going to heaven, but I cannot let her win. Matter of fact, when I die, do not tell her. Just say, he's doing fine. He can't talk right now, which is true. I'll be in heaven. And I'm dead, so I can't talk. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna, your down experiences, drug addictions, alcoholism, uh, depressions, uh, loss of family, your positives for sure, but even your negatives, God's gonna use for you to encourage other people. Don't you want to encourage? I don't want people down. I want to lift them up. I want to encourage them as much as I can. So you need to go where the discouraged are. The Bible says we're to weep with those that weep. We're to mourn with those that mourn. You remember, I, I've never done a funeral. I don't think that at some point I didn't cry. I've done a few that I smiled a lot because they were they had a testimony that was out of this world. And it just, I just smiled and laughed because I'm thinking, wow, what a testimony they had. What a life they had. You need to go where the discouraged are. Weep with those that weep. How many of you have ever lost your job? I have. I hope I don't lose this one because I am not going back to work. I can tell you that right now. I've been tasted of the promised land. Three hours a week ain't bad, buddy. So, how many of you have lost a job? How many have lost a loved one? How many have been, have been through some physical pain or some disease or some sickness or dealing, a lot of folks are dealing with uh, a lot of issues and heartbreak and sadness and broken hearts and divorce. And I mean, there's just, there's just so many things that, that people go through that are just kind of earth shattering. We need to weep with those that weep. We need to remember, remember how it felt. I'll never forget. When my dad died, I was with him. He was out in the middle of nowhere. And he went to light a cigarette. Hello. He went to light a cigarette, which his alcoholism took a lot from him, but uh, cigarettes really killed him. But you smoke them if you got them. Smoke them because North Carolina's a big tobacco industry, and I've still got sympathies for that state where I'm from, so it's caught you. The sacrifice that you're making, giving your life up to keep the economy of North Carolina going in Virginia, I admire that. That's quite a, that's pretty funny, isn't it, Jonathan? I just thought of that. So uh, you need to go where the discouraged are. We, me and my wife have done nursing homes for years. We did one when we were in Bible college as a ministry and then we, uh, we did two here for about six years. And then I was thinking those poor folks in the nursing home before the COVID. And so I told everybody here we were going to go. We're going to try to get 
visit the nursing home. We went in there, and it's like a sign-up sheet. They had the Mormons were there, <laughs> and the Pentecostals were there, and the Baptists were there, and the Lutherans. And it's like you had to jockey for position <laughs> to even get in. So, now, you don't just come in the nursing home ministry, buddy. We're, this is a sought-after ministry here. And uh, so we, we ended up not doing that because it looked like they had plenty of visitors. So uh, weep with those that weep. Remember your broken hearts. Uh, you know, people talk about, I almost said the Bible says, the Bible says in Proverbs 27, 9, walk a mile in a man's shoes. <laughs> that ain't in the Bible, I don't think. But imagine what it's like to be someone else. Imagine what it's like, what the fears, the anxieties, the needs that other people have. You know what people need, because I, I know what I need. When I went through some hard things in my life, I just need somebody to tell me it's going to be okay. And when, when somebody says, hey, I've been where you, you're at now, and you're coming out. Boy, I just eat that up, <laughs> don't you? I want to know I'm going to get through this. I want to know it's not something just that I'm going through personally. So, walk a mile in their shoes and remember, uh, remember your pain. Remember your sorrows. I, I think right now is about the best we've ever had it. Don't you think so, baby? We try to get in 23 hours of sleep a day. Sometimes we get less, but 23 hours, I'm joking, but 20, not by much, though, Emma. Uh, we try to get rest, and uh, God has provided for us. We took on a couple missionaries, and then God blessed us. We took on a couple more since Chris is working now. He doesn't need a, uh, he needs a shower curtain. I'm thinking, a man works at Goodwill, and he can't find a shower curtain? There's something wrong with him, ain't it? So anybody got a used shower curtain? Chris wants it. Bring it tonight. Just drop it off at the church. But we, we know what it's like. And boy, Chris has been through some stuff. And uh, he's getting back on his feet. He's working now. But I just want to tell you something about Chris. He's doing good. He's making good money. But don't assume, <laughs> don't assume that Chris is going ever going to give you any money. Because it ain't going to happen. Can I get an amen there? Chris, I don't know how much money, he's never got no money, but he ain't going to give you a dime. When he started working, we were able to afford a, another missionary. <laughs> but I tell him this, I pick with him a lot. But, uh, so remember your broken heart. And number two, just tell the simple truth. God is with you. Now before you got saved, before I got saved, I didn't know if I was going to come out of it. I didn't know if I was going to get up again. I didn't know how long I was going to stay down. I was hoping somebody, seven come eleven, good work, something, something would come in and uh, karma, whatever. I hate to depend on karma. Wouldn't that be terrible? That'd be a good name for a dog. Karma, remember that. We got a name puppy, so anyway. So, um, what was a before you got saved, you had no help. You were, you were a, a, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You were on the other side of God, and the devil would not bless you, could not bless you, and God would not. But it's different now. It's different now. Things change over time. And right now, you are in a position of being a child of God by grace through faith, and he's going to help you whether you want him or not. Amen. He's going to help you whether you're everything you ought to be or not. God, listen, <laughs> we need to tell the simple truth. Either it's true or it's not. You tell me which it is. Oh, preacher, I'm down. Yeah, I know I've been there, done that. I'll be there again. I'm telling you, God's going to lift you out. Amen. I'm telling you, God's going to bless you. God's going to encourage you. And he's going to do it for a purpose. I'll get to in just a second. And 
It's different. We're not alone. Say it out loud. I'm not alone. A little bit more. I'm not alone. Well, that sounded good. So God is with you. God's going to bless you. And listen, God does this two ways. He does it by his practice. You know, something I, I have people say, boy, that's it. My, 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 my nephew, yeah, I didn't read it, but he said, he said, he said, you're a man of a prayer. I said, well, I want people to think that. I don't actually believe it a whole lot, but some things get answered. And he said, you're a man of God. And I'm thinking, well, I don't feel like a man of God, but I sure want people to think that. It sounds, it sounds good. And, and he told me, I, I, I told him what I felt because that's what I've been through. And he said, that is the best advice I've ever gotten. He's been a counselor. And you know what? I thought, if you knew how many years it took me to get that. I didn't get that by reading the book. I got that by being down and in, in his specific case dealing with emotions that I hid from. Dealing with feelings that I, I killed and, and I, 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 I did, did it my way. We won't get into that. But I, I didn't allow myself to feel. I always admired vampires when I was a kid. I thought if I was any kind of monster, it'd be a vampire. How, how many kids say amen right there? Raise your hand. Where, what, what do y'all got now? Freddy Krueger. No, that was years ago too. I don't even know what y'all scared of anymore. Something on the computer, right? Some kind of thing on the computer and you get locked into it and you get killed. That's what it is anyway. I want to be a vampire because you can't hurt a vampire. I've been hurt. I don't want to be hurt no more. You know what? I think, can God do it with me? I'm unique. I'm different. He's had a lot of practice. What I was saying is there's things I learned by practice. Took me 10, 20 years. And somebody said, oh, that's brilliant. Well, it ain't, ain't too brilliant if it took me 20 years to figure out what I was feeling emotionally and why I was feeling that way and what I was dealing with. God has practice. You know, I like to go... To, I like to go to people that, I, the, the first guy I baptized, Cecil Case, was six foot eight, 300 and a lot. a lot of pounds. I just loved him, wore bibbed overalls. And one time he tried to wear a, a belt, we were going in a, I don't know why I'm sharing this, but you no, got, I gotta have you. <laughs> you were there, he tried to wear a belt and we were going in this, a little church, uh, they had it in a mobile home. We were visiting a big double wide. We were visiting that church. And it had mud on the ground, so they had a little plank that you go over. And he's walking on that plank. And I guess he took his breath in. He didn't have his, his suspenders on. And his pants fell down. <laughs> Thank God he had underwear on. But, I mean, they went all the way down to his ankles. That's what I remember about Cecil. <laughs> but anyway, I baptized Cecil. And I didn't want him to know I had no practice. He was the first man that I'd ever baptized. And it was, a, it was a livestock, what do you call it, water thing. And, uh, and, we, and he had about that much clearance on his head. And when I put him under, the waves just came out all over that <laughs> platform. And some idiot in the church went and told him, said, you know, the pastor ain't never baptized before. You're his first. And he came to me, and uh, he said, Brother, he said, I'm a little nervous. He said, you have never baptized before? I said, no, brother, but th the good news is, if I do drown you, you're saved. You're ready to go, so don't, <laughs> so don't worry about it. But I like somebody. I go to a doctor. I wonder if he's done that before. Well, you know, they did heart surgery on my wife and repaired, repaired her heart valves, she had five, four, three. five, three, four, whatever, three blockages, and uh, anyway, they did that surgery, and I kind of wanted to keep her a few more years, and uh, before I traded her in, but I was, I wanted to know how many he had done, I talked to people, we were a nervous wreck, and a lady from uh, Chestnut Street 
And Madison, we were at the farmer's market walking around town a few years ago. She come up and I said, hey, pray for my wife. She's having this surgery. She said, who's doing it? I said, Dr. Sharma. She said, oh, he's good. She said, some of the people, they take the heart out and blah, blah, blah. And that part I didn't really like. But uh, <laughs> anyway, and some do it a different way. So he does it the best way and he's really, really good. He's, uh, is he a Hindu? Is that what he was? Hindu faith, which I, I think when you're, when you don't want to get a doctor upset before he's doing surgery. So I thought, you know, there's a lot of roads to heaven. Let's don't, <laughs> let's don't, let's don't get him, uh, I, that was a joke for y'all that don't know. Uh, uh, there's only one way. But I didn't witness to him because I didn't want him shaky or getting under conviction. Anyway. So, uh, He's practice. And you know, and I thought about this a few years ago. I thought it's so, it's so neat. Probably one of Art was talking about being of uh, 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 Scottish descent or something. Of course, I've seen his relatives. And there's one guy in there. He's gypsy, Art. He's got a picture of him. That guy's a gypsy, which is good. I've always wanted to be a gypsy. But... God has practiced this over and over and over again. And some of you know, we do our, you don't know what your DNA is. Pop, Pop, Art said he's a little Middle, Middle Eastern, right? And it's funny, I, there was a guy, uh, you see that commercial where that guy's in a, a kilt and he's playing the bagpipes and he finds out that he's not Irish? What is he, Italian or something? I don't know, but it's something, something totally different. So he had to, I was Native American for 20 years. No lie. We'll talk about that another time. But I'm not now, but I was for 20 years. At least I thought I was. So God has practiced. Why did I say that? God has practiced, and you've got relatives. McGregor or somebody way back when, Art, that was a real Christian, maybe had your personality. He may have been grumpy. He may have been prone to, to angry outburst. <laughs> he, he like you, and God, when God saw Brother Hart when he was born and knew he was gonna get saved, God looked at him and said, oh, McGregor, here we go again. <laughs> He's done this over and over and over. If he wasn't even God, I could do it with the practice God's had. 6,000 years. But in, in, in addition to the practice, he has power. See, that's what we're dealing with. Can your life change? Anything you want to change can. Can it be better? Can you enjoy it better? Yes. And the great thing about it, and the greatest happiness you're going to find is when you start helping other people. You start encouraging other people. Quit thinking about yourself so much. Find somebody worse off than you. I heard, uh, what's his name? Brother Gay, you listen to him on the radio. What's his name? Jay Vernon, Jay Vernon McGee the other day talk about uh, some, some natives in Africa, and he said one of the men was blind, and the other man had no legs. It's supposedly a true story. And the man who was blind carried the man with no legs everywhere he wanted to go. He was his eyes. And so we, we complement each other. I need to be around people that are practical and that are stable because I'm the opposite of that. I don't like, I was telling the lady the other day, I don't like a lot of, uh, 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 well, discipline ain't the word. I got to have discipline, but, but I don't like to plan out my life too much. God, it just bores me. It bores me. I, my personality is I want to say, what's new? Let's see what God can do. And I need 
Sometimes people in my life say, wait a minute now, let's think this thing through. I said, we can do that later. Let's get it done. So we complement each other. We help each other. So God has power. God has practice. And I'm almost done. God, the purpose of it, to get it back, to get in the battle, to uh, get believing again, to get the Bible. Is it true or not true? It's absolutely true. See, we, we make allowances and we say, well, I don't know about, I don't know if the Bible's really, yes, yeah, sure it is. I don't know if it'll work with me. Sure it will. He said, worse than you. I know that's hard to believe. I'm looking at some of y'all, but. We sing that song because he lives. Amen. He's constantly working in your life. He's constantly more. And we say, God, why don't you help me? God, won't you intervene in my life? And he says, you idiot. That's what he would say. That's in the Greek. He says, you idiot. I got you on the potter's wheel. You are in my hands. I am so involved in your life and you don't even realize it. What else, honey? Is that it? <laughs> yeah. Blessed be God, even the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies. Thanks for your support. <laughs> You're getting a corn dog for lunch today. No ketchup. Who comforted us in all tribulations, all tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort. That's why God comforted you. So you can, don't leave people uncomforted. Amen. Go put your arm around them. Tell them you love them. Amen. 